Have you ever wondered where the spark for Stephen King's iconic horror novel The Shining was ignited? In the realm of dark tales and chilling narratives, few stand as towering as Stephen King's The Shining. But every story has a beginning, a source of inspiration. You might ask, where did the idea for this chilling masterpiece come from? What place could have possibly ignited such a terrifying tale? The answer lies in the eerie hallways of the Stanley Hotel. The Stanley Hotel, nestled in the Colorado Rockies, has a history as rich as it is haunting. In the early 20th century, a man named Freelan Oscar Stanley, stricken with tuberculosis, found himself in the high-altitude serenity of Estes Park, Colorado. The fresh mountain air did wonders for his health, so much so that he decided to create a grand resort, a place of elegance and beauty that would rival the finest European establishments. Construction began in 1909, and the Stanley Hotel opened its doors in 1910, offering an oasis of luxury in the wilderness. It was a marvel of modern technology, featuring electric power, telephones, ensuite bathrooms, a state-of-the-art kitchen, and a fleet of vehicles for guests. The Stanley was the talk of the town, attracting high-society guests from far and wide who reveled in its opulence and grandeur. But as the years wore on, the shine began to fade. The Great Depression hit the hotel hard, and it fell into disrepair. The once bustling establishment became a ghost of its former self, a forgotten relic of a bygone era. Yet it refused to be swallowed by time, and in the 1970s, found a new lease on life as a tourist attraction, offering guests a glimpse into the past. But it was in 1974 that the Stanley Hotel would find its place in horror lore, in the fall of 1974, a young writer and his wife found themselves as the Stanley Hotel's only guests. This writer was none other than Stephen King, who had yet to become the titan of horror literature we know today. King and his wife Tabitha had arrived at the Stanley Hotel in the off-season, when the shadows grow long and the mountain winds begin to chill. The Stanley, perched high in the Colorado Rockies, was an imposing sight. Its grand architecture was a stark contrast to the unyielding wilderness that surrounded it. The isolation was palpable. King and Tabitha were the only souls in this expansive hotel, a fact that was not lost on the young writer. The couple roamed the empty corridors of the Stanley, their footsteps echoing off the polished wooden floors. The opulent ballroom, the grand staircase, the long, winding hallways, all were deserted, creating an eerie silence that was broken only by the whistling wind outside. It was during these late-night walks that King felt a growing unease, a sense of foreboding that seemed to seep out from the very walls of the Stanley. One night, after a long day of writing, King retired to his room, number 217. As he drifted off to sleep, a haunting dream took hold of him. He dreamt of his young son running through the corridors of the Stanley, being chased by a sinister force. He watched, helpless, as his son turned a corner and came face to face with a fire hose that uncoiled, its nozzle morphing into a grinning, malevolent face. King awoke in a cold sweat, the dream still fresh, its images stark and terrifying. Yet, as a writer he knew that within this nightmare lay the seeds of a story. The isolated hotel, the sinister force preying on an innocent, the mounting dread. It was all there. King awoke from this nightmare with the plot for The Shining fully formed in his mind. While the Stanley Hotel does not directly feature in The Shining, its influence is undeniable. The essence of the story, the haunting aura, the sinister undertones, all have The Stanley Hotel's fingerprints all over them. Let's delve into the key elements of The Shining. The most prominent is the isolated hotel, an entity in itself much like The Stanley Hotel. In the heart of the Colorado Rockies, the Stanley Hotel stands secluded, surrounded by vast landscapes and towering mountains. This isolation is mirrored in The Shining, where the Overlook Hotel becomes a chilling character of its own, a fortress of solitude, cut off from the world by a blanket of snow, just like the Stanley during a harsh Colorado winter. Then we have the malevolent spirits. The Shining is rife with spectral figures, lingering in the corners of the Overlook Hotel, waiting to reveal their terrifying existence. The Stanley Hotel, too, is no stranger to tales of the supernatural. Guests and staff alike have reported odd occurrences and eerie apparitions. Some even say that the hotel is haunted by its original owners, Mr. and Mrs. Stanley. This spectral presence has a distinct echo in The Shining where the past residents of the Overlook refuse to rest, their spirits forever trapped within its walls. Finally, 
the snowstorm. A significant element in The Shining, it's the snowstorm that isolates the Torrance family at the Overlook, setting the stage for the horror that follows. The Stanley Hotel, nestled in the Rockies, is no stranger to intense snowstorms that can cut it off from the outside world. A parallel too striking to overlook. The Stanley Hotel may not be explicitly named in The Shining, but its influence is deeply embedded in the narrative. The isolation, the chilling spirits, the imprisoning snowstorm, all these elements that make The Shining such a gripping tale of terror are a part of the Stanley Hotel's fabric. In many ways, the Stanley Hotel is the Overlook Hotel. Today, the Stanley Hotel embraces its spooky past, a statement that rings true as we delve into the present-day reality of this iconic landmark. It's not just a hotel anymore, it's a celebration of the unexpected, the unexplained, the downright spooky. The Stanley Hotel has become a hub for paranormal enthusiasts, history buffs, and Stephen King fans alike. The hotel's reputation for being home to otherworldly inhabitants has grown over the years, and it has leaned into this unique selling point. It offers ghost tours, where guests are led through the historic building, regaled with tales of its spectral residents. Guides share stories of the famous room, 217, and its permanent guest, a former housekeeper who was injured in a gas explosion in the early 20th century. They recount tales of Flora Stanley, the wife of the hotel's founder, who is said to still play her piano in the music room late into the night. But it's not just these ghostly tales that draw visitors. The Stanley Hotel has become a shrine for fans of The Shining. Themed rooms allow guests to immerse themselves in the world Stephen King created, with decor inspired by the novel and its film adaptations. The hotel has even hosted the annual Shining Ball, a Halloween gala where guests don their best 1920s attire, the era when the hotel first opened its doors. The Stanley Hotel today is a testament to its past, a beacon for the curious and a magnet for those who crave an encounter with the paranormal. It has grown from its humble beginnings into a cultural icon, a place where history meets legend and reality intertwines with the supernatural. Whether you're a Stephen King enthusiast or a thrill seeker, the Stanley Hotel promises an unforgettable stay. This grand old hotel set against the backdrop of the Rocky Mountains continues to inspire, intrigue, and invite those who dare to step into its storied halls. It's more than just a hotel, it's an experience, an adventure into the unknown.